Hey everybody, welcome back. I have a private Facebook group called Brand Design Masters that at this point has about 5,000 members. I posted a question to the group last week that asked, what would you tell a designer who is just starting off that would help them succeed? And there were dozens and dozens of fantastic answers from designers who've been working in the industry for years. Some of them work for companies and some of them work for agencies. Some others are independent freelancers. So I gathered up some of what I think are some of the best pieces of advice and I wanted to share them with you today in this video. So here are 12 things a beginner designer needs to know to succeed. So if you're new to my channel and never watched one of my videos before, I've been a vice president of design for two major Fortune 100 companies. I've also been an executive creative director at two global prestigious design agencies. I've interviewed over 4,000 designers in my career and hired full-time more than 400. I've managed teams as large as 65 designers and have guided people's careers through being a junior designer all the way up to becoming executive creative directors and VPs of design. And if there's one thing I know, it's how to help designers succeed and grow in their careers. Oh, and by the way, I do career coaching for creative professionals. So if you're interested in some personalized attention, go to philipvandusen.com slash one-on-one and connect with me there. Okay, let's jump into the 12 things a beginner designer needs to know to succeed. Number one, Network with people who do what you don't do. So find some people who are really great in some areas that you're not skilled at. So if you're a graphic designer, you might want to find some illustrators or photographers or product designers or web developers and then collaborate on paid projects with them as much as possible. Share projects with each other. You'll be able to get more project work that way and the projects that you take on can be bigger in scope. Number two, remember there's no one right way to do anything. You have to keep an open mind. No one has the perfect design solution. So if you don't judge others' ideas immediately as being bad, you might be surprised to find that you'll get new perspectives and new approaches to the problem that you're working on. Number three, Understand that you're really only going to be spending about 20% of your time designing. So don't get frustrated by that. 80% of your time is going to be spent doing literally everything else. You're going to be in meetings and critiques and reviews. You're going to be in planning sessions. You're going to be gathering inspiration and doing production work and dealing with organizing and categorizing your files. You're going to be communicating with your coworkers and with managers and account management. You're going to be writing emails and working on project management software. And if you're a freelancer, you're going to be doing even more things like meeting with clients and bookkeeping and networking. You're going to be marketing yourself and communicating with suppliers, writing proposals, legal contracts, dealing with your taxes, business development, pitching, learning new stuff. Take all of these things into account when you're pricing your work because it's all part of the work. It's not just the final thing that you're delivering, it's everything that goes into it. Number four, don't do everything from scratch. At the making of this video, it's 2022. And if a design asset can be created, there are millions of designers in the world now. And if it can be created, it probably has been created. So subscribe to stock sites like Envato and iStock and Design Cuts. And if you can, use any pre-made assets that can save you time and energy. Things like presentation templates or brand guidelines templates or pre-designed mock-ups or display fonts. Use what's available to you and don't feel like you have to create everything from scratch. Number five is a really important one. If you're an independent creative, don't work for an hourly rate. Clients are paying you for a specific outcome. How much time and energy you spend on it is no one else's business but your own. So as long as you deliver that outcome, that thing that they desire, they'll be happy to pay whatever it's worth for them. Number six is one of my favorites. Be prepared to keep learning until you retire. You hear me say this all the time, but getting out of school is only the beginning. The design industry changes fast and often partly due to fashion and partly due to technology. So just be aware that you're gonna to have to keep learning stuff all the way through your career. Number seven, interning at a great company beats getting a fancy title at a lesser company. You don't have to start your career working at a no-name company. 
As a junior designer or even an intern, you can work at a Fortune 100 company if you have a great portfolio and can really talk about your work well. Don't be seduced by having a senior designer or a creative director title right at the beginning of your career at a smaller company when you could work on bigger, better known brands that will add more impressive work to your portfolio by working at a lower level title at a larger company. Number eight, learn more about the entire ecosystem that makes up a creative and a marketing team. Don't stick yourself in a graphic design box for years and years. Take time to learn about and get to know people who work in other areas like account management and marketing and content development and web development, analytics, branding, people in HR and company culture, even sales and finance. You never know when you might want to pivot later in your career by adding on some sort of new skills later. Now, it's okay to be just a graphic designer when you're just starting off, but there are a lot of other paths down the road that might be interesting to combine with your graphic designing for a more diverse and fruitful career path. Plus, if you want to be a design manager or a creative director someday, you're going to have to have a much broader skill set than just design. So keeping your eyes open and being open to learning about other areas of this ecosystem of, of marketing and creative in terms of agencies or in-house corporate work is really, really smart. Now, I love number nine. Number nine is you have to remember that all design is actually sales. You are designing solutions, not artwork. You're trying to communicate and get someone to actually take action and do something through your work. You're trying to get them to buy a product on a shelf, buy a book, buy some sort of product or service. You have to learn how to attract and how to motivate people with your work. You also have to know how to verbally describe what it is your work is trying to do and how it's going to do it. This is going to help you learn how to present your work to your managers, your creative director, and also to clients. Number 10 I found to be a really important one, and that is have a creative outlet outside of work. Paint, play music, dance, sculpt, do crafts, do woodworking. At work, everyone is going to be trying to put their fingerprint on your work, your managers, your clients. It really helps keep your designer sanity if you have an outlet outside of work that's creative where no one can tell you what to do and where all your decisions are final. Number 11. Don't take critique and criticism of your work personally. This is really hard to do at the beginning because every design you do is like your baby. But over time, you have to develop a really thick skin to criticism of your work. You don't want to become a prima donna. You have to remain teachable. You may feel that other people are all wrong about your work, but you have to believe in your heart that hearing the opinions of others are going to ultimately make you a better designer. Remember that their feedback is their perception and their reality. But by definition, it is therefore valid. You have to understand and accept that people are going to view your work in different ways. Everyone brings their own opinions and their own personal life baggage to whatever it is they say. And you can't control that, so you can't own it. Number 12. Remember that no one stays in their job forever, and that's a good thing. People move around to other companies, so you want to, of course, connect with other creatives, other designers, but you also don't want to close yourself off to people in other departments where you work. Everyone you meet, everyone you make friends with, everyone you connect with on LinkedIn are in the future going to be potential sources of business referrals for you in the future. They could be an account manager or a finance person, it doesn't really matter. They could recommend new clients to you someday. Also, when it's time for you to change jobs and end up at a new company, they could be there to get your resume on the physical desk of a hiring manager at the next job that you want to get. So instead of having your resume go into some black hole of online job application, you can actually know someone who works at the company where you want to get to. And over time, your network's going to grow until you know people at dozens of companies. And that is going to really, really help your career. So that's it. That's 12 things a beginning designer needs to know to be successful in their career. And if you need coaching help to build your creative career, reach out to me at philipvandusen.com slash one-on-one and let's get your career rocking. And with that, thanks again for watching. Bye for now.